Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome an accomplished entrepreneur from Bangalore, India, Mr. Vivek Mishra. Vivek, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for bringing me to your, your platform, and uh, I look forward to have this interaction. With you. Thank you. Vivek is the founder and CEO of FibroHeal, biotech with it's a biotech startup healing wounds through silk proteins and vivek has been recognized awarded and felicitated several times so vivek uh, before we start talking of fibro heal tell me about your own journey from a professional manager to an entrepreneur uh very interesting question sir to start with uh, i will also give the journey of little bit about my education and the background i yep. was born in a small village in up Mm-hmm. I grew up in Northeast, did my schooling from a government school, mm-hmm. and that taught me multiple steps related to the challenges and how do you address it. Mm-hmm. Of course, looking back, we are able to connect the dots. Uh, I went on to study pharmacy, mm-hmm. did my management. Mm-hmm. Of course, all this in different states of the country, and which mm-hmm. helped me to understand various culture, ethnics, and various other kind of things, which is sure. helping me now when you are running the company. Mm-hmm. I started my com- uh, career with a company called Simply Learn, which was a startup about three, four people, one of the earliest members mm. in EdTech space way back in 2009-10. Worked with various companies, including last assignment was with Tata, mm. who, which has invested in a seed company or an agri-tech company called mm. MetaHelix, which mm. later on was acquired completely by Relish India. Mm. So I was leading their rice seed business, which contributed to up in a portfolio, which had a revenue of more than 40%. And mm. all this led to something, you know, of trying something on our own. And that's mm. when the journey of fibro heal or the concept of silk for wound healing mm. started, you know, and we have seen that a lot of research has happened in this area, but no product is out in the market. Mm. So we started exploiting it, doing research, talking to various professor, professionals, uh, surgeons, hospitals, and we realized that, you know, there is something, some potential which looks there. I mean, mm. of course, startup was booming there and I was not coming from a normal middle class background, you know, you think that you need a lot of money to do a startup. Mm. And it happened. And ultimately, we registered the company in 2017. Mm. And it's been a good journey. So far, five years has I'm also sure. transformed me yeah. into a, you know, probably a lot of learnings has been there for me on mm. both personal front, professional front. Mm. And uh, I mean, that's all from my side, sir. Fantastic. Fantastic. And when, you know, when you talk about now fibro heal. Uh, you know, you said it's about silk proteins. Yes, sir. Tell me a little bit about FibroHeal and what motivated you to start uh, a separate company for silk proteins. Ah, yes, sir. So, uh, FibroHeal is uh, first company from India to have commercialized silk mm-hmm. for wound healing. Mm-hmm. And few among the whole world, there is hardly half a dozen companies which are working in the area of human applications of silk, Mm -hmm. other than textiles. A lot of these textile applications are there in saris and other Mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and India is the second largest producer of silk with more than 33,000 metric ton production. Mm -hmm. And uh, of late, a lot of push is coming from the government side also. Mm -hmm. Now coming to uh, what started, one thing we had realized that, you know, when I was a, uh, you know, young boy Mm -hmm. in probably class 10th, right? Mm. I had an injury which lasted for about two months. Mm. I was playing without wearing shoes and then, you know, a glass, glass pierced in my leg and all those things. Mm. Mm. And of course, you know, it it got infected and all those stuff. So something was there. I know the pain which we went through, mm. but we forgot it. So when I was with Tata, I met some farmers also who said mm-hmm. that, you know, good silk sari last for generations together. Right. Um, grandmother to great grandmother to grandmother to daughter in law and Correct. those kind of things mm. and then you know you spend time with farmers because when you are working in a professional company you meet a lot of your customers and mm. sometimes you will have food at their home and all those stuff so mm. they will share a lot of their stories is that mm. i have used this and then you know i got this so similarly so somewhere it was on off on off in the year 2014 when i started i got in touch with a gentleman his mm. name is Bharat Tandon. Mm. he had built a company in animal health space called Vetcare which later on formed a JV with a Dutch company called Promi and it was acquired by Cargill. Mm, mm, mm. So 2014, I met him and I got a chance to meet ex-founder of Sutures India also, which is mm. now called as Healthy Medtech. Yeah. 
of course uh, four years later he become my one of my angel investors he is mm. with five royal now as a co promoter mm. but all these things happens uh, i mean one thing led to other and ultimately today we have i can say that we have a very innovative concept the proof of concept is uh, established more than 100 hospitals across the country are using the product mm. and we had a very sound management team as well as an advisory team to me because mm. these are the people who have built business and exited right uh, so it acts as a strong you know mentor strong mentors to me mm. so this has been the journey so far and probably Wonderful. this is the driving force yeah. so tell me vivek you know for my viewers and listeners are there different types of silk i mean natural synthetic or is is that uh, uh, is there any other type yeah so there are some four types of silk of course synthetic generally the amino acid sequence because protein is you know proteins if you look at these are the building blocks of body and amino acids are the building blocks of proteins mm. there mm. are four types of silk sir mm. normally known as eri muga tassel and mulberry which is happens again you know there are several more classification by voltin multi voltin those kind of things but mm. broadly four sir Hmm. Karnataka produces most of this mulberry silk. Mulberry hmm. in Hindi or other local vernacular they call it sehtu. Hmm. So mul uh, generally mulberry silk, iri and muga is mostly grown in area of uh, northeast part of India, hmm. Assam hmm. and and tassar is something which is called hunted silk. Okay. In Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh which lies on tree and hmm. so these are the four varieties of silk. Uh, we use more of mulberry silk in our uh, this thing because hmm. we are based in Karnataka, Bangalore. Hmm. So uh, and it helps in faster wound healing because of specific amino acid sequence which is there okay so when you talk of healing wounds and you gave me your own example of when you were in class 10 what are the problems that come when you try when when you're trying to heal a wound and how does silk help yes sir so one of the most important aspects when healing any wound it's the wound bed preparation or cleaning of the wound or in short you call it debridement mm. but if the wound is not clean or properly debrided whatever you apply it will not heal right that is one part secondly sir when it we look at silk the specific amino acid sequence helps in faster cell adhesion and cell proliferation which leads to faster wound closure mm. so normally i will give you some examples uh, in a hospital setting let's say for example a graft site or donor site mm. where they they extract the skin from thigh region mm. and apply it somewhere else normally with the existing systems it takes about 18 to 20 days to heal them mm. normal paracetamol mm. while in case of our dressings it mm. heals in about 8 to 9 days time this okay. we found out during our trial at in trauma center delhi mm. similarly this enabled us to look at the other aspects so then we realized that it is not just a wound but various types of wound diabetic foot ulcer is different bed sore is different C section wound is different. Right. So we poured into all of this, and for this there was a simple model what we followed that we call it times model. Mm. That is tissue management, infection inflammation, moisture management, epithelialization, and scar. Mm. So these are the five areas which we are addressing through the silk mm. and the specific amino acid sequence that is G A G A G S present in silk glycine, alanine, glycine, alanine, glycine, serine, which helps in both moisture retention as well as faster closure. and of course we have also loaded it with uh, antimicrobial agents like silver and other things mm. so again you know i'm trying to understand this but uh what you're saying is that silk has amino acids yes sir and those amino acids are what help uh, in the healing process yes sir how how is it that uh silk has been able to retain these amino acids and all these major pharma companies which have created so many different types of bandages are not using the same amino acids for healing yeah so now coming to sir silk has got 50 silk has got two proteins so normally if you look at silk protein it has got two proteins one is mm. sericin and other is fibroin sericin mm. is the outer layer and fibroin is the inner layer we utilize fibroin to heal wounds that's why the name fibro heal healing okay. through fibroin mm. now there is a set of 52 amino acids the mm. chain is of 52 amino acids now if you synthesize if there is two or three amino acids you can synthesize it and make it mm. and anything it's sometimes difficult to replicate the natural things which comes uh, at such and silk mm. has stayed for so long mm. so with the human uh, kind so in that case that this specific amino acid sequence what i mentioned is mm. second is there another thing which still silk fibrin is a self assembling protein so mm. the extraction process is little complicated it took us more than 4 5 years to streamline this mm. and not many people would have thought on these lines because there are a lot of papers but no one right now i see that lot of research is happening across the world there are a lot of company which are coming in uh, this thing and one of the leading universities being university of tuft 
mm. which is doing it. A uh, lot of research in the area of, uh, you know, biotech application mm. of silk, mm. including, mm. you know, trying to replace the cold chat mm. through encapsulating in silk. So it is gaining a lot of traction. So post 1990s, a lot of this thing happened. Mm. Also, sir, there was one drawback with silk earlier. Silk mm. sutures was introduced. Mm. But they used to braid it, which had both sericin and fibrin. And between the braids of sutures, sometimes microbes used to grow. Mm. That it used to stitch the hard surfaces like bones mm. and skin and those kind of things. Mm. So many times, you know, couple of this thing and, you know, when you enter the market prematurely without understanding the material. Mm. All these things we were able to study and understand. And that's how we are able to give a uh, silk protein with particular molecular weight. Because mm. between a particular size, you know, X to Y, it helps in faster cell adhesion. Mm. So we are able to crack that code and we have been able to address How that. wonderful. How wonderful. That has helped us. But Vivek, you know, if I tomorrow say get a cut on my hand, what do what should I do? Should I just take a piece of silk and wrap it around it and it'll help me? No. So what is so the for that for that we have come up with a powder powder mm -hmm. application which becomes easy. You know, if there is a uh, what do we say abrasion or there is a small cut, you simply sprinkle the powder. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the a recent case is you know I pierced my again leg uh, in October around 15, and I applied my own powder and in five six days you know it healed the wound. It's on the probably site of our uh, you know on our social pages it's there the wound on my own. So mm -hmm. that kind of things and you just need to apply it okay. and it will heal the wound much faster compared to any of the antibiotics or any of the product which is out there. And this wound is what you said is one of the two layers of the silk, is it? It is the inner layer. Inner Basically layer. what happened, we deal with fibroin a lot because mm -hmm. fibroin has got this wound healing ability. Mm -hmm. So we utilize this fibroin material. Of course, we had with silver, we have without silver. Like again, wherever there is chance of you know any infection or other things, we prefer mm -hmm. silk with silver. Mm. Because silver is still, you know, a very potent antibacterial and antimicrobial. Mm. So one of the worries that most people have when you use a natural product on a wound is, is there any likelihood of an infection? You know, because these are all, you know, silk is coming from silk worms and, uh, you know, it is natural. True. So how does one handle uh, this particular aspect or how do you handle it? Yes. So uh, I will slightly go back to the extraction process. Normally, you we have cocoons. Cocoons, what happens you, through various processes, that cocoons is completely transformed into water. Mm. In a, it is completely solubilized. And then through various methods, it is extracted out. Now, what is left out is concentrated again. So there is heat involved. Mm. There is various filtration involved. And not to forget that what we start is clean cut cocoons. We don't take normal silk cocoons. Normally what happens in a cocoon, sir, there will be worm, mm. which is put it in boiling water, thread comes out, which is reeled and weak, and the worm which dies, you know, is used as a feed in various industries, mm. poultry and those kind of things. Mm. What we do, we allow worm to become moth. Mm. They will pierce the cocoon, break the cocoon and move away. Mm. So what we get is completely cut cocoon. Whatever mm. we get, sir, we have a mechanism to sort this out also. Mm. That, you know, only clean cocoons go into the system. And that too, we have collaborations with uh, about 1,000 farmers, 1,000 odd mm. farmers, mm. whom we pay a little extra to mm. ensure that we get a particular grade, a grade of cocoons and they follow that, uh, follow the best, you know, best practice packages, mm. which helps, you know, that you should not use water with heavy metals and this and those mm. kind of things. So mm. we follow all those steps are at early stage, post which this is completely, you know, the degummed and then, you know, both proteins are segregated. So mm. what you get is a biomodified protein. With this amino acid sequence, but it is very pure. Mm. Now that is used to formulate our products. Mm. Again, in different forms, in seeds, in mess, in foam, in powder, in particles, or in gels, those kind of things. Mm. So that's and how we it. That's yeah. fascinating. Um, so, and, you know, you also have been speaking about the healing wounds for through silk proteins. Yes, sir. For my viewers and listeners, what are the other types of uh, healing uh, that happens? which is not based on silk proteins. Yes. So there are multiple, uh, you know, uh, methods or multiple products or, uh, you know, scientific things which are used. One of the popular ones being collagen, mm. again, which is derived from slaughterhouse byproduct. Mm. Then again, uh, for from both, you know, uh, mammals as well as, you know, from fish sources, they derive collagen. We mm. have also chitin and chitosine based dressings. We have different types of other uh, semi-synthetic and synthetic our polymers also something like PGLA, then we have got various alginates, then mm -hmm. hydrocolloids, various celluloses, those kind of pressings are there. Now mm -hmm. what happens, sir, I will give a simple thing. There are considered wound care three types. Mm -hmm. One is traditional wound care, 
one is advanced wound care one is active wound care mm. a lot of people might have seen some advertisement of thalapia fish it used to treat burn and those kind of things mm. now traditionally something where we use normal cotton wash mm. dip you know apply some iodine and which has been used from hundreds of years 50 yeah. of years you know iodine and mm. wash advanced is something like hydrocolloids or hydrofibers or cellulosis mm. which helps to create a moist environment but it does not directly involve in wound healing. So mm. there is passivity healing the wound. So that is called advanced wound care. Now we come in the category of advanced and active wound care. The reason being we are also providing that moisture environment because of the moisture holding capacity of silk. As well as we are actively participating in wound healing because silk acts as a scaffold also. Mm. What the bandage what we are giving it acts as a scaffold where cell attachment happens. Mm. So we fall into category of both active and advanced wound mm. So these are some of the broader terminologies, you know, our broader uh, concepts or the products which are being used in traditional wound care, advanced wound care, and advanced and active wound care. Mm. Amazing. And based on all your research, and you know, we, we, we both live in a country which has got so much wealth of uh, past experience did our ancestors when i say ancestors I mean thousand years ago did they also use protein for healing i frankly oh, speaking know. sir i am still not sure but the, if i look at some of the information what i had got hmm. silk a lifetime work is needed to be done in silk. The reason being, one gram silk is stronger to one gram steel. And that is the reason why during World War I, mm. there was a silk commissioner based at Berhampur, West Bengal. They I used see. to make parachute ropes out of uh, silk. silk. So that was one of the things. So like, and uh, I'm not sure you know, what they used it, but we know that you know, silk had been, uh, uh, what do we say, brought into human consumption in almost 3000 years back. Wow, and, and and that was a trade secret which China wanted to maintain and mm. all those things. Mm. Uh, there are a lot yeah. of stories around it, but roughly, I'm sure you know silk has been used in for multiple methods, mm. multiple ways. Mm. But wound healing is one such area where we are focused, and we mm. have seen results. We have seen very interesting. More yeah. Yeah. You also said that you know uh, you we can use uh, fibroheal products for burns. Right, sir. Um, is tell me a little bit more about how this works. Yeah, so in burn cases, what happens? There's a particular mess type of dressing, what we say, mess mm. which have pores and other things. Mm. What happens in burn case, normally again depends on which type of burn is there. If it's grade one, grade two, you know, mm. you, we apply powder or other kind of thing, but it is uh, grade three, then you know, you have to apply that mesh. Right. You need to, of course, the treatment involves a different method altogether because the calorie requirement goes up significantly in the patient. Mm. So, of course, nutritional profile has to be well taken care of. And this mess helps in any excrete or anything which comes out. It ensures that, you know, it allows and uh, the permeability of those of things. And it allows silk and silver to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And even you can irrigate the wound from the top in mess. Mm -hmm. So mess is particularly suitable for high degree of burns in uh, mm -hmm. case of uh, this thing. And we have seen a lot of good response from burn patient as well as other type of wounds also. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm happy to share that, you know, we have treated more than 75,000 patients so far in the country. Wow. Hmm. With our range of products, uh, you know, and some of the, uh, you know, leading hospitals across the country, including AIMS and Sandra Jones hmm. and other, Very you know, interesting. Victoria and other things, they have been using our range of products. Fantastic. You know, when I was also reading about you, you talk about silk bioengineered products. Tell me about your uh, products which have been bioengineered. Yeah, so that's why uh, what I explained about how it is extracted out. That's when, you know, because you are not just, you know, taking out cocoon and mixing it. There are mm. various processes you are doing it. And ultimately that cocoon, what is there in the solid form, it is translated completely into liquid form. And then mm. again, it will be restructured and brought into a, a system where it is used in to formulate various types of products. Mm. That's what we call it, sir. Of course, certain things I may not be able to reveal it, but uh, no, that's, what, that, that's what are the things what we follow in. And we ensure that there is no traces of sericin present there. Mm. What is left out is particular fibroin in a particular molecular weight range. Mm. So that and that gives the optimum output or the performance in the product. Wonderful. So we have time for two more questions. My sure. next question is that will your products be available to the individual customer? Uh, like, you know, we all buy Band-Aid, for example. Will it be something like that or is it basically for use in hospitals and for serious uh, injuries? 
sir as of now it is widely used in uh, serious cases and mostly in hospital setup mm. there are two reasons to it one is of course silk needs lot of education mm. lot of people the awareness needs to be on a fairly uh, lot of energy and efforts has be and this also lends credibility when i said 75000 patient when this becomes 75 lakh patients you know mm. the credibility and all this is very high mm. i am not ruling out that you know tomorrow we may get into that kind of segment whether bandaid or sprays or something which can be available over the counter mm. but of course the game plan building the company and the path is completely different for that kind of things mm. and considering the company uh, where it is today mm. i think that it's little far fetched at this moment but at mm. this moment we would continue our operations in various hospitals and uh, various uh, facility settings where we can help and bring right now we want to ensure that we have a comprehensive product basket mm. and uh, i am happy to share that you know we have we are as a company have been addressing uh, acute wounds chronic wound and during this women's day on 8th march we introduced post operative dressings particularly mm. for c section and yeah. uh, incision wounds mm. so the idea is to challenge some of the multinationals mm. in the in the in form of innovation in the form of product range which is completely local and derived from our nearby sources mm -hmm. and you know make bringing it to a global platform so but i am not ruling out that you know what happens 3 year 5 year down the line but mm -hmm. at this moment probably sir we will be operating mostly in hospital setting and uh, those kind of things oh, wonderful and my last question to you vivek and this is for the many many people who will listen to our conversation what would you say are three lessons that you have learned as an entrepreneur that you want our viewers and listeners to take away from your own journey and from our conversation ah uh, uh, that's probably the cherry on the top questions are you know <laughs> okay it's the list is long but still i will try to summarize it whatever my key learnings has been mm -hmm. so one of the important aspect is uh, perseverance and patience mm -hmm. it's been little more than 5 and 1/2 years since i registered the company yeah and we have been slogging it out covid came we did not know how to survive but we were not ready to give up and that's why today we are uh, you know our numbers are much improved now whole okay. teams motivation morale the new products utilizing covid time to bring products so patience and perseverance is mm. one part mm. second is of course keeping focus on the people and ensuring a very transparent culture among the mm. people while building up and third part i will say is do what is in your hands other things don't bother don't overthink about too much what will happen how i will happen because trust me you would have plan x and b will happen to you mm. so so don't think about too much you should be on the right path you should mm. be on the right track and if you are patient perseverance and if the intention is clear mm. if intention is good and clear some day the other things will fall in place mm. you may not know it it will look like a plan but it will automatically fall in place mm. so that that often i call is the fourth factor sir that fourth factor whether you call it destiny or god or what mm. your force but mm. if your intention and other things are clean it will someday fall in place sir. very nice and on that note vivek and your three amazing lessons the first one which you said was be patient persevere and have the willing willingness to keep on continuing and i think that's such a major mantra for any entrepreneur the second you said was focus on people and be transparent in your dealings with them and the third one is do what is in your hands don't overthink any issue thank you so much for speaking to me thank you for talking to me about your own journey about fibro heal and the amazing stuff you are doing with uh, you know silk products for uh, wound healing uh, i'm sure you are you know the, the fibro heal products are going to benefit not just 75 lakh but 75 crore people sometime in the world you know and uh, i i really hope and pray that you will get there thank you for speaking to me and good luck to you thank you thank you very much sir and namaste everyone thank, thank you. you thank you for listening to the brand called you video cast and podcast a platform that brings you knowledge experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.